What's going on, y'all? Um, today what I want to do is something that if you listen to the podcast, we've kind of already done this. It's more of a visual thing, but for those of you on the YouTubes, I want to go over this real quick. Um, first of all, Ticket King, if you're planning on buying some uh, NFL tickets, some Green Bay Packers tickets, make sure you check out Ticket King first, always and only. Lowest ticket prices anywhere. They are a Wisconsin-based company. Uh, they're based in Green Bay and Milwaukee. So um, I, I think what I wanted to focus on, and of course this is in some ways, you know, we'll get to it pertaining to the, the Jordan Love thing, but I guess what I really wanted to focus on is the fact that our focus on average annual salary is stupid. Now, we can get super in-depth on this and, and try to come up with all that stuff. I'm, I'm not going to give you the best way to look at a contract because I haven't even figured that out yet. But we got to start looking at better ways to look at contracts. Um, and I will give you some suggestions, one in particular. But this is what we all do, right? We go on social media, you go on Twitter, X, Facebook, whatever... And Ian Rappaport says, $55 million a year. He is now tied with Mr. Joe Burrow for the highest paid quarterback in football. Now, no, he's not, <laughs> first of all. Um, number one, they're not the same contracts for a couple different reasons. First of all, the guarantees are lower, 142 compared to 146.5. The practical guarantees, 200 compared to 219. Close enough for all intents and purposes. Um but th there's still additional issues. For example, um, J Trevor Lawrence still has two years left on his contract. So although it's a five-year deal, it's a five-year extension, but this can be spread over seven years. So these, these are all like practical considerations in terms of like if you were to compare that to Jordan Love, Jordan Love does not have that. And so he doesn't have that same luxury where we can fudge the numbers to make it look bigger than it is. But there's one main thing that I think we could all look at that would give us a better understanding of what the heck is going on here. And that is this little column right here. Average percentage of cap at signing. Because this is telling you how much of the cap they're giving you. Right? When when um, when Brett Favre back in the 90s signed a contract and was the highest paid quarterback in football at $10 million, was he just a big pile of crap? Was it like, man, compared to today's quarterbacks, he sucked? Or was it he was the highest paid quarterback in football and he was the best in football? We have to look at percentages. You can't just look at the, the, the total value because the salary cap goes up. And that's even from one year to the next. Joe Burrow's $55 million contract was signed in 2023. Trevor Lawrence's was signed in 2024. The cap went up significantly in that period of time. And so if we look at the percentage, because this is how much the team actually values you. Again, there's a lot of other fudgeable factors. It's not really worth getting into all that. I mean, it is. If you'd like to, that's on you, and I, I'd like to pursue that at some point, but not today. This is at least 10 steps in the right direction. Let's look at how much they actually love Trevor Lawrence. If you look at it from here, he's 10th. He's not number one. He's 10th. When Dak Prescott got $40 million in 2021, he was given a bigger contract than what Trevor Lawrence got. Deshaun Watson in 2022 getting 46 was a bigger contract. Kyler in 2022 getting 46.1, bigger contract. Jalen getting 51 in 2023 was a much bigger contract. Pat Mahomes in 2020 getting 45. Lamar in 2023 getting 52. Justin in 2023 getting 52 and a half. And Josh Allen getting um, 43 in 2021. Those are all bigger contracts. Here's, here's the other thing. I... I added a column here this is if we look at in 2024 money so you say well it's not more money it's, it's 50 45 is less 45 is less dude pat mahomes got a bigger contract than trevor lawrence it's not even debatable the bottom line is how much would he have been paid in today's money it would have been 56 or 58 million dollars if you look at joe burrow's contract it's not 55 million the joe burrow contract in 2024 is 62.5 million dollars Trevor Lawrence didn't get that. He didn't get anywhere near that. It's not even close. This is a game. This is a game they're playing, and they're, they're doing it to make us all look stupid. When they tell you, which the team wants you to believe it, 
The agents want you to believe it, so they pu- push it out to Ian Rappaport, and they try to get you to believe it. They're trying to get you to believe that Trevor Lawrence got this massive contract because the team wants you to think that they're really doing a good job by Trevor, and the agent wants everybody to think that he did a great job getting his guy money. It was 10th, dude. It was 10th, 21.53%. And again, remember, there's fudgeable numbers in there in, in the fact that he has two additional years. So we can spread this five over seven years. So if you were to actually look at like the, um, what would you call the metric? Something along the lines of um, expected salary cap impact. He would not even be 10th. He'd be further down. So the question then becomes, as we turn to Jordan Love... What should the Jordan Love contract be? Because right now, the discourse, which I think is lazy discourse, is 55 is the Joe Burrow contract. He shouldn't be getting 55. Again, 62 and a half is the Joe Burrow contract, not 55. 55 is down here. So if, if what some people are saying is, well, we don't know anything. He should be getting like 45. Okay, 45 million is down here. It's Daniel Jones and Kirk Cousins. So do we think he should get the Daniel Jones contract? Some people would say, yes, we don't, we don't know anything yet. Let's just look at it for a second, all right? Here is, uh, this is Jordan Love. This is his PFF. This is what he did last year. He had an 83 PFF grade. Keep this in mind, too. 4,600 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions as we go through this. Here's Daniel Jones. Now, uh, let's take a look real quick. Daniel Jones... Um, this what year was that? It was 2023 that he got his contract. Okay, so in 2022 is the last season. I got it up here. I should have known that. So it was right here. <clears throat> this is the year. So so we looked at this, you know, the Giants now. We're all the GMs. We looked at it and we go, okay, he had a, a rocky year here as a rookie, 65. That went up to a 78, 71, 76. So we kind of know what he is. But look at what he did statistically. 29, 24, and 36. He never cracked 4,000 yards. Look at his touchdowns. His rookie year, which was his worst year, was his best. 24, 11, 10, and 17. Look at his big-time throw rate. Again, Jordan Love. 37 touchdowns, 4,600 yards. When did Daniel Jones ever come close to that? And remember, Jordan didn't really get it going until week 9. If we look, and we will, actually it's right here. Uh, where did I put it? Here. This is when Jordan Love kind of figured it out. I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit. In 13 games, he had 3,300 yards and 29 touchdowns. In 13. So we're talking a little more than half a season. He had about as much, or let's see, what was the touchdowns again? And 29 touchdowns, and significantly more touchdowns. In 13 games. The big-time throw rate... 1.4%. 1.4%. Jordan, for the season, where is he at here? Let's just do this one. 5.5%. 1.4%. Are you kidding me? Turnover-worthy plays, 2.5%, 3%. Um, Daniel Jones did have a higher adjusted completion percentage. Jordan kind of struggled with the accuracy, especially early on. It got better later, but um, that was like his one big knock. If you look at his passer rating, 97 compared to 92 And remember, I mean, this is one of his better years here. I mean, 92 is the highest that you're going to get. Are we saying that Jordan Love should get this guy's contract? I don't think so. I'm sorry. I I just, I do not think so. He is worth more than $45 million, which again, remember, is not the 45 that we're thinking. When we think 45, we're comparing it to the 55, and it's like, well, it's a discount. No, 45 is way down here. It's dog crap money. Right? I mean, look at these guys down here. This is Daniel Jones. This is Kirk Cousins, which, by the way, for a free agent contract, that's actually quite high. Uh, It's Derek Carr money, who signed at 31 years old and is not good. It's Aaron Rodgers money, who obviously took none because he's getting paid from the Packers and he wants to seem like a great guy and all that stuff. Baker and Geno. I mean, it's it's, we're down to close to Jordan Love's (laughs) last contract. I mean, these are all rookie contracts down here. So really, how many real contracts are there? There's these... But we didn't know what Geno was going to be, so that's fake. Uh, Baker was terrible. Oh, no, they just paid him in 2024. Um, so that's kind of real. But this one's fake. You can eliminate it. I mean, it's it's like, this is it. This is all the contracts that really exist. And you think he should get this one? I don't think so. Um, 
What other one is somewhat more comparable? Uh, Trevor Lawrence. is, is um, Actually, what was I going to look at here? Let's just pull up what I have available, because I must have skipped Trevor. Let's look at Dak. So where's Dak on our list? Dak signed his $40 million deal, but in today's money, it's 55.9. So that would be higher than Trevor. Now remember, if he signs for 55.9, people are going to lose their minds. Everybody's going to lose it, and they're going to say, I can't believe this. He's getting more than Burrow? No. I mean, he's getting more than Burrow in the same way that he's getting more than Brett Favre in 1997 or whatever it was, but he's not getting more than Burrow in terms of a confidence vote. Again, if you want Burrow money, it's 62 and a half. It's not even close to that. We're talking as a percentage, 21.9 compared to 24.5. It's not the same. But let's compare him to Dak, because now I'm, I'm actually kind of curious. Let's, I'm throwing this out. You can say Daniel Jones if you want, because we don't know. But wait until we go through some of these, because it might uh, change your mind a little bit, because not a lot of these guys were very well known, like Jalen Hurts. Um, so Dak Prescott. 2022 was was the final year that they so was that is that right 2023 he got his contract Dak no I must have been going through 2021 so 2021 meaning 2020 was the last year so this is what we'd see and I mean this is solid you know Jordan was a 84 Dak you got 84 72 75 80 85 I mean, that's pretty solid and you got consistency right? Which some people would say that's more than what you have with Jordan. But again, look at some of the stats, right? I mean, this is, he didn't crack 4,000 here. He didn't crack 4,000 here. He does here, but he has 24 touchdowns. He gets almost 5,000 here, but 30 touchdowns. I mean, I wouldn't discount what this means right here. In, in, again, in his, not only in his first year playing, but really, I mean, granted, he, he did crack six in the first two, but I mean, he didn't really figure it out until here. 13 games, he put together a massive stretch of yards, touchdowns, and limited interceptions. I mean, a lot of the interceptions are like here. Um, so anyways, I mean, I would say it's somewhat comparable. You look at his passer rating, he's been a pretty solid quarterback. There have been some injury issues. I mean, 2020 would have been the last year he got injured in 2020. If we go back and look at how many games he actually played, I mean, this is this was his, I think this was his contract year, right? I can't remember anything. Yeah, 2021, so 2020 would have been his last year, so he was injured in his final year. And so, you know, you've got sort of, what was his age at the time? He was 27, so not super old, uh, pretty close to Jordan, I think. I mean, I don't know that that's a terrible comp, but again, that's putting you around 55, 56 million. Let's keep going. Um, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray got paid in 2021. Pretty promising guy. The injuries didn't start stacking up until the year after he signed his contract. But also remember, there were some weird clauses in the contract and all kinds of... They weren't super sure about this guy. Um, you know, 83 and 83... So he had two pretty good years. If you look at his passing, that's really the story. Not very good, getting better, really looking pretty solid, and then obviously it's fallen off because the guy can't stay healthy. But they didn't know that in 2021. There's probably some concern because of his size, but it hadn't really reared its head a ton until 2022. Um, but again, he's never cracked 4,000 yards in that span. Never. He never cracked more than 26 touchdowns, and he's had 12 interceptions every single year. I'm just saying, now the big time throw is out of control. I mean, 7.9 is ridiculous. The turnover worthy plays are relatively low. I mean, as a quarterback, he seems to be doing a pretty good job. Maybe it's just low volume, right? How many attempts? 515 compared to 634. Maybe if you look at per attempt or something, um, you know, 7.3 as far as yards, he was at 7.6. So he's got more yards per attempt, less attempts. Um, but. I don't know. I, I mean, are, are we saying that this is significantly worse than, than he was here? You know, because the other thing to consider... Well, well I don't want to jump ahead too much. Um, no, we'll just we'll keep rolling here. We'll, we'll get it at the end. On one hand, you know less about Jordan, and that's a negative on Jordan. On the other hand, it's a positive. Because here, I mean, you look at how long it took, like Dak. You know, Dak got better and better and better. You look at uh, Kyler, he got better and better and better. 
you look at Jordan and it's like he's just starting, right? I mean, if you go with seasons here, I mean this this is one game, this is a couple snaps, this is his one season right here. And that's what he did. And it was again, that's that's including the rough patch. He was a top 10 quarterback. Um so who's to say he doesn't continue to get better? I mean, I'm just saying there's, there doesn't seem to be as, as much of a hard ceiling as some of these other guys like Dak, where we've seen five years, we know what he is. We, you know, Daniel Jones, we kind of know we've got three solid years. We kind of know what he is, know what he isn't. You don't have that with Jordan. So on one hand, it's a negative. On the other hand, it's a positive. Let's look at Jalen as our final example real quick. Um, you know, he's got some good football here, but when did he sign his contract? Jalen Hurts signed it in 2023 which means 2022. So you've got this year, which was like nothing. Then he had this year and this year. He really had two years. Two years of football. In that time, you got 3,417 touchdowns, and then he just cracked 4,000 and had 25 touchdowns. That's all he did, and he ends up getting this contract. In 2023, he gets $51 million, which is the equivalent of 58 in today's money. Are we positive that he's not going to get Jalen Hurts money, which in today's dollars is $58 million. I don't know. I mean, and, and I've talked about this before. It kind of just depends on, on your own personal thought on it. I don't even know exactly where I fall. Um, I'm nervous. I don't know. I, I mean, there's a, there's a decent amount of confidence that I have in Jordan Love based on a couple different things that he did. The consistency right, is important. It wasn't just, you know, sometimes you see guys that have good grades and it's like they had two 90s and they were garbage the rest of the season. The fact that, you know, you know, you look down the stretch, obviously this last game was rough against San Francisco with the two picks, one of which was just, I mean, it was just a Hail Mary, like this game's over, I'm trying to make something happen kind of thing. Not that that's necessarily an excuse, I'm just saying. Um, you know, the fact that it ramped up, but I don't know. I don't know what he's going to be. I don't know, you know, we saw several examples of guys. I mean, Jalen Hurts, Signed his contract, went to crap. You know, uh, Daniel Jones had a terrible year, his worst year after signing his contract. I don't know what's going to happen. But at the same time, I can't completely discount that, you know, we're looking at somewhere around, you know, potentially a Jalen Hurts contract or a Kyler Murray contract or a Dak Prescott or a Trevor Lawrence contract or a, you know, I mean, you got to assume that this is kind of our range here, which is a pretty big range, but I don't think it's going to be Daniel Jones money, which, I mean, I, I just, this is sort of the floor is, is 50, I would think. I mean, you could look at Jared Goff and say, that dude is only 29. He signed a $53 million contract. You know, there's some stability there. Maybe that's kind of where we're at. Maybe that sort of sets the floor around, you know, 50, low 50s, we'll say. I just don't know. I, I would love to see in the comments what you, wh where you fall on it, because it is, it is a big deal that we don't know. But at the same time, let's just, let's go to the end here. We'll get rid of this. If you look at what Jordan Love did from week nine on, this is Jordan Love. This is the ranking. Now, it depends which one you go through. Um, completion percentage, he was fifth. Yards, he was third. Yards per attempt, he was number... Uh, touchdowns, he was number one. Yards per attempt, he's fifth. Interceptions, uh, he's seventh. And, of course, that most of these guys had less games. If you look at his PFF grade, he's tied for second with Matthew Stafford and just barely behind, 0.5 behind Brock. If you look at passing grade, he was the number one passer. Um... Big time throw percentage, he's sixth. I mean, it's just down the line. They get second in passer rating, just barely behind Brock Purdy. And you say, well, yeah, but that's only week nine. First of all, week nine is a long time. All right, week nine is here. We're talking like 12, 13 games. But here's the other thing. Watch this. Here's from week one on. If you look at week one, Jordan Love is ninth. Okay, so he's already a top 10 quarterback, and that's in a year with a lot of really good quarterback talent. If you take his grade and apply it back to 2022, he's like a top five quarterback. But let's leave that alone. He's already top 10. What if we go to week two? Where is he? Jordan Love is a top seven quarterback. What if we go to week three? Jordan Love is a top five, top four 
quarterback. You go to week four. I mean, it, you can go from week three on. He's top three right now. I mean, I don't know how long before, I mean, before we get any closer than that, he kind of fluctuates in and out. Again, he jumps to number one at nine. But you can go all the way out. I mean, he's already a top 10 guy. You just go to week two. He's almost a top five quarterback. You go to week three, he is a top five quarterback. So the idea that we've, we've got like this two-game sample size, or five-game, or four-game, or six-game, bull crap. Bull crap. And beyond that, how many just terrible games did he have? Zero. How many bad games did he have? Two. He had two, maybe three, if you, call, if you just say 50s in general. Giants, 49ers, Raiders. Those were the sort of bad games. That's it, though. He was never appalling. He was never abysmal. I mean, even if you say, well, this is obviously an abysmal game. Not necessarily. He only threw two turnover-worthy plays. So, in other words, one of these was not even his fault. And two turnover-worthy plays is not a big deal. It happens all the time to all kinds of quarterbacks. It's just a matter of how many actually get caught and, and intercepted. In this case, two out of two plus one that wasn't his fault. So you just have this fluky, disgusting game. And it ends up being just, you know, whatever. But also, you look at his good games, it's out of control. How many guys have three games in the 90s? How many have six in the 80s or higher? Not very many. How many did it in 13 games? Basically none. That's why he was the number one quarterback from week nine on. But also a top five quarterback from, like, what, week three on? I don't think it's a small thing. And then he comes in this year. He's ready to go. He looks great in camp, which I know you could say, well, that's stupid. Everybody looks... No. Jordan Love didn't last year. He never has. Jordan Love has never looked good in camp. That's a little little insider's tip. Even last year, you, 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 oh, Jordan Love had a good day. His good days were essentially, he got off to a slow start, but he figured it out. I don't, he might have had one or two days where he was good from the second they started to the second they ended. This year, so far, every day has been a good day from start to finish. He's a different quarterback. Because... I mean, I'm just speculating here. He figured it out. In other words, the question is, are we going to see this Jordan when he comes back? Are we going to see this Jordan? Or are we going to see some kind of an average thing like this? Well, I know we're not seeing this Jordan. That's for sure. Because that's what happened here in the early part. First half, terrible. Second half, he comes out, throws three touchdowns, and they win the game. <laughs> that's what happened. Um, so far, he's looking good. But I, again, it just... It just comes down to what do you do? I think, I think, and I'm not saying you have to agree with this, I'm not even saying it's my opinion. Let's move off of what should we do to what do I think the Packers are going to do. I think the Packers believe they have their guy. I think the Packers believe that this is an MVP caliber quarterback. I think this is a guy that's not only capable of winning you a Super Bowl, like if you look at Jared Goff, I think everybody knows Jared Goff is solid. He's never going to be an elite quarterback, right? There might be a couple years where he's really up there. He's a top five guy or whatever. He's not that dude. And so he gets paid like a guy that can he can get you to the playoffs. There's a chance if we got everything else going right, we can fly through. We might be able to win a Super Bowl with him. Let's lock him up. I think you've got a handful of guys where the team said this guy is not only good enough, he's special. I think Joe Burrow was that guy. I think Josh Allen was that guy. I think Herbert was that guy. I think Lamar was probably that guy. Pat Mahomes was definitely that guy. After that, I don't know. Watson, they presumably believed it, but obviously there were a lot of issues with that. Hertz and Kyler, maybe, but I don't know. I really don't. Dak, I don't know. I think he's a guy that's good, but I don't know if, if I mean, last year was clearly his best year, but that was after he signed his contract. I don't know if they ever looked at him and thought, this guy's going to be, you know, he's he's an MVP caliber quarterback. He is a number one quarterback type of guy. I think with Jordan, they think that he is. And I'm not, I'm not saying he's going to get Joe Burrow money. I think that they have the luxury of saying, hey, man, it's only been one year. We got da, da, da. But if you believe you have that, you, would you be willing to give him the, the Jalen Hurts contract? Would you give him 50, 58? I don't know. I don't know. But the, I think the bottom line is this is the prism I'm looking through. Because if, if they give him 54... Or let's say they give him the uh, Trevor Lawrence, well, it's 55. I think the math is maybe slightly off. I just used the uh, cap of 25.4. I don't know. Let's say they give him, uh, let's, let's say it's 55. Let's just go with that. He gets 55 also. 
most people are going to explode and say, I can't believe this. I'm going to look at that and go, I think that's a great deal. Now, there's a chance he sucks, but there's a chance everybody sucks. Trevor Lawrence already isn't that good. <laughs> we haven't really seen Trevor be the guy where you just your jaw drops for like 13 weeks. Your jaw just continually stays on the floor and you go, holy crap, this guy. I tell you what. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach it from a different vantage point. I'm going to look at it. 63 is the top. 55 is kind of, it's just kind of the number right now. If you're, if you're a starting caliber, we think we can win with you. Kind of a guy, especially a young one. And 45 is, we think you suck, but we don't have any options. <laughs> so let me know what you think. There's, there's a lot here. Uh, let me know what you think about Jordan Love and his contract, what you think he's, you know, should you pay him as though he's the guy? Should you just not pay him? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there's probably a lot of theories about how to handle this. It's a unique situation, but let me know. I'm out of here. Have a good one.